a common feeling that I get after hearing all of you is that we all want to make in India, to make luxury as a sector, qualifying for Make in India. And Make in India is something which our Prime Minister loves so much to talk about. Make in India proudly, ladies and gentlemen. Fiki, I personally have been involved with uh, Make in India initiatives and Jeev has been there with us. Uh, so I think Make in India is not just a dream. If luxury can be, I mean, you all are traveling in luxury some part, somewhere, some pocket. Can we all see the vision make in India coming true when it comes to luxury? I'll start with Sanjeev because you'll have more challenges there. So let us know what are the challenges that you see in make in India. Um, it's, it's a dilemma. Uh, we are the largest market for many product categories. Yes. We manufacture for all the top brands in the world. So we know we have the capability to manufacture better quality if demanded but we don't have an India brand. I'll give you an example in the jewelry sector. Uh, India exports uh, cut and polished diamond worth about 60% uh, of the global market of $28 billion. So global market for diamond cut and polish is $28 billion. And India has 60% of the market. But the total jewelry market in the world is about $280 billion. And there's no ma Indian player which has a mark in that international jewelry, Indian international jewelry brand. I'm not talking about an Indian company which have acquired retail chain like Gitanjali has done in the US, but an uh, Indian brand of jewelry or any other product category. And um, of the various reasons, uh, one of the reasons is also uh, the fact that you have to understand the international consumer and what does the consumer really want? Their needs, their desires, their uh, motivators to purchase are very, very different uh, as compared to the Indian buyer. Uh, for example, uh, recently I heard about some uh, jewelry, um, a, cart a Cartier uh, and Tiffany's buying what is called green gold for the uh, gold jewelry. And green gold is an important requirement of the US-based consumers. Why? Because they want to make sure that the source of that gold, which has gone into the final product, is clean, it has no negativity around it. Uh, whereas if you try to sell that concept in India uh, to a retailer, uh, to a consumer and say, because of this green gold effect, uh, you need to pay about maybe even 100 rupees more per gram, Forget it, it'll never sell. So you have to understand that uh, international consumers drivers. You, and one of the um, elements that has to be also inculcated is the ability to compete in the international market. And that can only come in if the Indian market is opened up for the international brands at a reasonable uh, customs duty and excise duty and so on and not at a um, exorbitant level so that the Indian manufacturer, the Indian retailer can meet up with the global competition and be equipped to handle that. Very well said. And we all, I guess, agree to what Sanjeev has said. That takes me to another question to you particularly. Is uh, uh, licensing, is, is, it's, it's something that we're hearing globally for past many years, but it has come to India. Uh, we, we are traveling towards it, we are trying to take more licenses and we are trying to kind of work more around that area. So, but uh, your category of products specifically deal quite a bit there. So what's your experience there and how important is that bit for you as a luxury brand? So Cross, uh, as a global brand, uh, uh, really uh, has been uh, a, a very strong proponent of licensing, uh, not from the very beginning, but in the recent uh, five years or so. Uh, licensing is a concept where uh, a brand, uh, in so, uh, so to say, outsources one of its categories to another company, uh, uh, which is called a licensee. Uh, and that licensee manages that category end to end for that for the parent brand. So my company represents. Uh, so my company is the exclusive global licensee for 
leather accessories for the cross brand. Uh, so uh, to, to answer your question, uh, licensing is a huge trend uh, with uh, luxury brands globally. Uh, I think anybody who's traveled to international uh, airports will see, uh, you know, Tommy Hilfiger, uh, well, let me take another example, let's say Calvin Klein, anything from uh, fragrances to underwear. Uh, so it's nothing but an example of a brand really exploiting its brand name by licensing out uh, some of its, some categories to other companies who can do it better. Cross has been uh, another example where, uh, you know, they focused, they continue to focus on the pen business and they have licensed out uh, the leather goods business to us. So uh, licensing is a very powerful uh, a tool for uh, a luxury brand to, um, uh, to kind of uh, expand its reach and also expand its revenues and profitability. Uh, and this is an opportunity for uh, companies uh, in India uh, which may not be ready to or may not be ready to acquire a brand or may not be ready to take their own brand global but have certain core capabilities which allow them to, uh, you know, maybe, uh, act, you know, reach out to a global brand and ask for a license. Uh, so this is, is an opportunity which uh, brands in India uh, really can, uh, can exploit. Fantastic. I think there's a good takeaway for all the audience there. I mean, this is an opportunity and if in case you would want to, I think offline they can also touch and base with you post uh, this panel. Sanjeev has to take a flight, he has to leave us. Before you leave uh, the, the platform, Sanjeev, there's some few things about luxury per se, anything that you would want the audience to hear you out on. Some of the aspects of luxury which is very, very important is the quality standards of both on the manufacturing side of the product and on, uh, on the, uh, across the entire life cycle of utilization of the product as well as at the point of sale of the product. And it's very important to make sure that the last mile of sale uh, or last square feet of sale, that is your store manager and your store staff understands why the customer is paying a premium of maybe 300% over same leather product or a same apparel uh, which is not in the luxury space, which is not the same luxury brand. And if you are not able to handle that effectively, uh, you'll always have a, a problem in terms of managing your sales targets because of the fact that the intricacies of the product uh, benefits beyond a certain core buyers of that product in India, the intricacies of that product is not necessarily known down the line um, for the other aspirational consumer. Uh, there's a very interesting uh, ad which was running a few months back uh, about um, this person uh, going to shop for, uh, uh, going to buy a yacht. Uh, and while uh, looking for uh, the purchase and negotiation uh, for a purchase of a yacht worth uh, a few lakhs of rupees, uh, he says, is pe discount kitna milega mujhe? So that is a mindset of the Indian buyer uh, which you have to be able to handle when you're talking about luxury in India. Thank you. Sorry about this, I have to catch a flight. The previous uh, uh, interesting um, group took much longer, so sorry about this, I need to leave. Thanks. Thank you, Sanjeev, for joining us. And uh, we'll continue the session probably. Yes, so that uh, takes us to another interesting uh, uh, discussion point that apart from licensing, there are issues related to, in your particular case of private labels, issues on IPR, issues on copyright, issues around it. How is the designer fraternity kind of combating those challenges and uh, how important are these things as far as you to establish a luxury designer brand? See, issue, hello. issue related to the copyrights, IPR, definitely we do have to face a lot of challenges in terms of, you know, one person need to be engaged all the times because, you know, uh, to survive in luxury industry, you need to give variety and uh, you need to change your style your products every second or third month that means copyright and design act applies to us 
So we need to protect ourselves just to, you know, safeguard in the terms of, you know, copying the products from other uh, lower end or maybe a premium market. So in terms of legal uh, hassles, yes, there is a system and it takes a lot of time. And by that time, you know, you sell off the product and you move on to the another thing. And I have experienced, you know, one of, I will not name the brand name who copied our you know, print and uh, sold and it was a premium brand whereas we took almost six to seven months to go into litigation and those are the areas we need to keep a watch. That is definitely again a challenge to be in a luxury market. And I said how important is uh, uh, copyright to you as yeah. establishing yourself as a designer brand? Now, the, the copyright is definitely an important area. Now, when we talk about establishing our brand, see, we come from a, um, uh, a lifestyle segment. Mm. We sell mostly clothes, we sell jewelry also, and uh, we, we do customization, a lot of customization. Rather, we are a bespoke company. And uh, in terms of, you know, uh, it, there is a lot of challenge to maintain those areas. So, I would like to say that you, you need to be, you need to be very much innovative in terms of, you know, selling your products. Keep on changing the products in a frequent period of time, whereas those copyright acts and all those areas can be taken care of. Okay. So that means you are suggesting that anybody who wants to go into a private label or a designer label should focus on copyright and the prevalent IPR acts and issues. Yes. Counterfeit is another issue that you would face. And I think, ladies and gentlemen, it's a prime focus of any new designer that make sure that you don't get counterfeited so fast. Okay. So I would ask Saurabh now. Uh, Saurabh, uh, we've been all talking about, she's manufacturing for the brands abroad. You've been doing a brilliant job. You, you're doing your private labels. But why is Gadgil not thinking of going global? You are so big. What is holding you back? We are already global. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, saying, I'm, I'm oh. saying going as a global luxury Make in India brand. See, um, now what is global is a, again a definition. Uh, if you look at presence, we already have stores in Middle East and in US. So in that ratio, in that rate, we are global. Uh, to be able to, you know, really be uh, servicing the entire world market, I feel, you know, it's really the brands, all the global brands are aspiring to come to India and get a foothold here. Because the market's here. The, the next money is going to come from India. If you look at, if you talk to the major luxury brands, for them, Asia is the next hotspot. And so I we really feel the paradox, I mean, say, make in India, it should be, I think, sold in India also. Uh, you make in India, use Indian technology, use Indian manpower, use Indian skills. But India itself is a big market. And why try to you know, go and ape the other brands and go west when the margins here are there? I understand, but don't you want to be the Cartiers of the world? See, Cartier started from India. <laughs> Cartier were big because of the Indian Maharajas. And Cartier acknowledged that fact that we became a big company because of India. The Jaipur, the entire Rajasthan kingdom, the Baroda kingdom, they were the clients which made Cartier big. So if you look at the brand's history, luxury brands, they have become really from India. Okay, okay, I understand what you're but, saying. But, you know, having said this, um, we are doing certain things, uh, like, you know, on a, on a designer thing. So we're launching a collection with Tarun Tehliani. Hmm. Uh, it's again a silver jewelry collection. Hmm. Uh, it's primarily targeted towards the global market, where we have a lot of expats. Uh, weddings happening overseas mm. and you know for these kind of weddings people don't want to real carry real jewelry mm. so that's the segment which we are retargeting now it will be bridal as well as evening wear but primary silver and 14 karat jewelry uh, which will be very stylish designer and it will be uh, sold all over the world okay similarly uh, as you know salman khan is a brand ambassador so we're also doing the being human jewelry range yeah. uh, which which will again be stylish uh, now luxury again it's going to be commercial luxury it's going to be people on the streets who want to buy it because it is their star's brand and this again will be global. So I th the platform which we feel are, you know, much franchisable, which can be sold in various formats online, by kiosks, boutiques, we are looking at those formats. But I feel as a diamond and gold luxury jewelry, it has to be done in a manner which even the experience counts. You can't really you know, outsource it where the experience is not there. Mm -hmm. 
counterfeiting to a large extent can be really overshadowed if you have the shopping experience. A person who's going to buy, say, a really heavy piece of jewelry, it's, it means something to that person. It's my wedding or it's going to be like a 10th anniversary gift. Or it comes with the entire shopping experience. Yeah. And for that, he would not want to go and do a counterfeit. So example, I mean, without naming people, the guys here who do a Tiffany copy. But if I want to buy a Tiffany for my wife, I would say, okay, let me go and have the experience there. Than going and going to a small office somewhere in a gully and picking it up. So I think luxury, the experience is very important. Okay. And, and you see that's coming to India. That's, that's, that, that that's there already in India. there in India. Like and I feel, ask a lot of people, like the you know, Indian luxury in, in hotels, the service which you have here is unparalleled. No other Absolutely. airlines. I mean, if you look at Asian airlines, the staff, the service which you get here, people are in awe of that. Mm -hmm. So, we are what we are. Initially, I said 1% of luxury India takes care of. Very interestingly, 60% is hospitality of that 1%. So, uh, that's, that's very me. true. Now, that takes me back to you. Uh, you've been manufacturing for all the brands like Kenzo's and others. Yeah. Uh, don't you think that you can manufacture, if you can't make your own brand go that big, can you ma manufacture for some of the brands who are Indian brands and can you guide, advise, handhold them to reach that level? To start with Shilpa, I think the reason I started Turquoise and Gold is to be a global brand. Okay. I have, okay. uh, you know, I mean, I think first of all, we need to get over this phobia of the West. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, some of my uh, fellow um, colleagues said that uh, basically, you know, the thing is that what I don't understand is that even though we have all the luxury brands in India, when you walk into the store, half the collections are not there and even me as a, an individual who travels a fair deal, I don't invest in, even if it, say I buy a bag, I tra tend to travel abroad to buy it, I don't buy it over here. Why are we still so sort of, you know, caught up with this entire thing of the West? Because, I mean, living in Bangalore for, for that m matter, you know, every aircraft that comes to Bangalore is like an old aircraft. Once I go, like, once I go, travel to London, I get into a, a different aircraft altogether. It's always, the West, I think, needs to start taking India a lot more seriously. And I, we are the largest, I mean, rather the youngest, as Mr. Modi says, the youngest democracy. There's immense amount of pot potential and I just need to, I think we need to tap into it. That and another very important factor is that there are 500 leading brands across the world mm. and there's, there's only 30% presence in India as opposed to 70% in China. I know China is the largest market for uh, luxury retail as such, but India is a, a very, uh, you know, I mean, it's an emerging market and it's growing. At, I think if I'm not mistaken, it grew at 51% last year, which is incredible. You know? Fantastic. So, I understand that.